How's it going, guys? Difficult question for cardio step one. Before we start, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give me like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram threads, moment underscore medical, M E H L M A N underscore medical, links down below for my Telegram links to the Telegram group channel down below. And I start the clip. Seven year old girl, she's brought in for a cardio pulm examination. And we have this schematic here showing us oxygen tension, dissolved oxygen, PO2 within various chambers and vessels leaving, entering the heart. And question wants to know which the following is most likely defect. USMLE slash NBME, absolutely obsessed with this type of diagram slash schematic, okay? I copy and pasted this directly from my cardio PDF, holy shit, all right? So if you want practice with these types of diagrams, use my cardio PDF, pin comments below, all right? But let's just whip to the answer choice here. Choice A, atrial septal defect, left to right, shun, wrong fucking answer. Now this is what's going to go down. Look at the vena cava here, 73%. They can say SVC, IVC, I've seen them just write vena cava, all right? So you have this arbitrary 73% of oxygen tension, and it goes to the right atrium, 73%. Does that make sense? You watching this clip, correct, right? Okay. Does this make sense? I'm asking you. 73% goes to 73%. Yes, that makes sense, because why would you have any change in oxygen ordinarily going from the vena cava to the right atrium? You wouldn't. All right? So this makes sense, meaning we don't have an ASD, because if we have an ASD, we will have a step up in oxygen, it might go from 73 to EG 85. And you're like, well, how the fuck did that happen? Okay, it's because you have an ASD where oxygenated blood from the left side of the heart, which is higher pressure, goes across the ASD to the right side, lower pressure, and now you have a step up in oxygen from the vena cava to the right atrium, okay? So that's what an ASD would look like. So let's just continue through the other answers here. So choice B, ASD right to left shunt, wrong fucking answer. Doesn't exist on USMLE, okay? I've never seen any type of Eisenmenger related process where you get a reversal of a shunt uh, in the atrial uh, chambers. I've never seen that. Maybe cardiologists can attest to how it might be possible in some cases. Never fucking seen it. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, pancreatic arteriosis, wrong fucking answer. Now, for PDA, this is what's going to go down. First of all, I ask you the pancreatic arteriosis. It connects what to what? I'm asking you, watching this clip, PDA would connect what to what? Okay, well, it's going to connect the descending aortic arch to the proximal pulmonary trunk slash pulmonary arteries, okay? And that will go left to right after birth, okay? So from high pressure to low pressure. So if that were to occur, we would have a step up in oxygen from the right ventricle to the pulmonary artery which we don't have here, right? So you look at this here and I say, does it make sense when you go from 73% 73% from the right ventricle pulmonary artery? Pulmonary artery, we're not yet at the lungs. We're going to the lungs, but we're not there yet. So should you see a step up? The answer is no, you wouldn't see a step up. So if you did, if it just automatically went 73 to 85, you're like, well, that shouldn't fucking happen. You're right, it shouldn't. That would mean we have a PDA, okay? So once again, it connects the descending aortic arch to the proximal pulmonary trunk slash pulmonary artery. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, real quick, uh, who gets a PDA? I'm asking you watching this clip, who gets PDA? Some students will say, well, neonates get it. No fucking shit, but who gets it? Which population of neonates? It's gonna be congenital rubella syndrome. It's exceedingly high yield for you assimilate. You have to know that. And you also need to know you can close a PDA with indomethacin, which is an NSAID. You can keep a PDA open with prostaglandin. As I already said, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, ventricular septal defect, left to right shunt, wrong fucking answer. Now look, let's take a glance at these oxygen tensions again. We have 73% in the right atrium. We have 73% in the right ventricle. I'm asking you watching this clip. Does that make sense? that we have 73 in the RA goes to 73 in the right ventricle. Does that make sense? The answer is yes, it does make sense, okay? Because why would we have a change in oxygen tension from the right atrium to the right ventricle? We wouldn't. If we were to see a step up from 73%, let's say, in the right atrium to 85% in the right ventricle, that would indicate we have a VSD, where we have blood moving from the left side of the heart from the left ventricle to the right side of the heart, the right ventricle, so high pressure to low pressure. And I made a prior clip addressing that as well. I have that in my cardio PDF. But that's what we would see in the diagram if this were a left to right shunt across the VSD. So 
You guessed it, correct answer is going to be choice E, ventricular septal defect, right to left shut, and Eisenmender center. Well, let's look at the oxygen tensions again. You have 96% in the left atrium that somehow steps down to 85% in the left ventricle. Well, how the fuck would that happen? It wouldn't happen. Okay, there's no reason why we should have a significant decrease in oxygenation from the left atrium to left ventricle. That doesn't make sense. So the only way that's possible in theory is if, holy shit, we have deoxygenated blood from the right side of the heart moving across that VSD to the left ventricle here. Okay, so we have a right to left shun, Eisenmender center. Now, another high yield factoid I can tell you about Eisenmender syndrome is if they ask you, the starting point for how it occurs, the answer is going to be pulmonary hypertension. So what goes down in Eisenmender syndrome is you have a VSD. Children who are born with a VSD are not going to be cyanotic at birth. Okay, so you have left to right shunt across that VSD. That's oxygenated, goes to deoxygenated. You're not going to be cyanotic at birth. But over time, that increased preload going from the left ventricle to the right ventricle, well, the pulmonary circulation has to accommodate that increased preload. So over time, the pulmonary vessels will constrict to limit that extra blood flow. They say, fuck you, I don't want this extra preload. I don't want this blood flow. So we're going to constrict these pulmonary arteries to prevent that increased blood flow. So now that increased preload that was coming in, we are now secondarily getting increased afterload of those pulmonary vessels to prevent that increased preload. So that increased afterload in the pulmonary arterial circulation is going to back up to the right ventricle, causing right ventricular hypertrophy, and we eventually get an equalization of pressures between the left ventricle and the right ventricle until the right ventricle in some cases can exceed the left ventricle in terms of ability to exert, and that will force the blood back to the left ventricle. We get a reversal of the shunt. Okay, so if they ask you what starts the Eisenmender syndrome, it's not right ventricular hypertrophy. That, that's not what starts it. It's the pulmonary hypertension. And the pulmonary hypertension will in turn cause right ventricular hypertrophy, which will enable that reversal of the shunt. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.